Information Pathways to the Brain Humankind has evolved to obtain and process information. To achieve this it relies upon two methods, the first directly, via the five main organs of sensory perception, and secondly indirectly, by information which been processed externally to comply with limitations inherent in the organs of sensory perception. Directly processed. This consists of processing information via the five inbuilt senses of sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Indirectly processed. This consists of processing information obtained via a legion of external methods, such as those associated with chemical, optical, radio, mechanical and other means. The information obtained uses techniques beyond human sensitivity to obtain directly, and is converted into brain-readable information material, so it can be understood and processed internally. The Purpose of the Brain the purpose of the brain is to convert all the information obtained into mental power via the use of mental energy and cognition. These give the user opportunities to manipulate and control their environment, and others in their environment, to fulfill both their biological needs and their perceived needs. Therefore, this new theory of personality is called man as an information processor MAAIP. Biological needs Food, clean water, clothing, sanitation, shelter, education, clean air, safety and protection from others, oxygen, love, health, money, freedom from pain, sleep, comfort, sufficient exercise, cognitive skills, language skills, etc., etc. Perceived needs. These range across the whole spectrum of human activity, from acquiring territory, seeking an afterlife, Elevating one's social position, money, etc., etc. Often perceived needs are extensions of biological needs, exotic foods, fine dining, multiple lovers, ornate residences, etc., etc. The acquisition of perceived needs is seen to increase one's power. The two types of power. There are two types of power the brain seeks to create from the input of information. The first relates to somatic related power, the power to create the best environment one is able to for the body to function, and to achieve contentment for the user, and by extension, the user's family. The second type of power is an evolution of the first type, to obtain the manipulative power to make others work on the user's behalf. This power is needed, because attaining the goals of the user to obtain perceived needs invariably requires the assistance of others. To achieve both types of power the brain uses the eight structures of power which are available to it. 1. Charismatic power, the ability to persuade and influence others. 2. Coercive power, opposite of reward power, carries threat of punishment. 3. Expert power, knowledge often gained via experience. 4. Informative power, power commanding a premium as few others have it. 5. Legitimate power, due to holding a position of influence. 6. Moral power, used by people in positions of moral authority. 7. Referent power, power to use social leverage via access to power holders. 8. Reward power, exercising the ability and resources to reward activity. Differences between types of power. The manipulative power used as the intent is to create the environments of one's choosing, and create layers of protection to preserve the user's lifestyle, happiness, and that of his family, and to acquire perceived needs. Because of the evolution of power from the somatic related to manipulative, often power characteristics overlap and are usually more developed in the user of manipulative power. A broad brush outline of these differences may be Somatic related power users Characterized by patience, forbearance, a seeking of basic contentment, less aggressiveness, often has better manual skills as opposed to intellectual excellence. Very aware of the environment which he lives and works in. Manipulative power users. Manipulation aims to alter the behavior of others to suit the user's ambitions. The user often advances indirect, devious or deceptive tactics, strategies and influences to obtain their goal. Very often they are well educated and are able to browbeat those who are in the path to achieve their goal. They are often ruthless in their pursuit of social influencers who may assist with a favorable outcome to their desires.
Somatic related power characteristics Somatic related power user Sees goal in life to exist comfortably, according to his standards Often has a strong work ethic, is considered by those around him slash her as dependable, and shows peer respect Usually not lacking in self-confidence, rarely thinks too far outside the box, can usually adapt to changing environment without too much difficulty, is often fairly contented, eager to improve his slash her environment, but may lack the skills to do so. Normally has a positive attitude in the workplace. Enjoys the company of co-workers. This personality type is often breadcrumbled by management. Is often intellectually fairly staid in his views, even dogmatic is less likely to act on cues from others, usually low to median income earner, doesn't use symbolism efficiently. Manipulative power characteristics. Manipulative power. Characterized by impatience, aggressiveness, which may be masked by a persuasive manner. Often has a better intellectual skill than manual skill. Sees goal in life to potentiate self-existence and interests of family, actual and perceived, to a maximum, even at a cost to others. Often uses the work of others to attain this goal. Is very much goal-orientated, but flexible in choosing a path to that goal. Often thinks outside the box quite naturally and without hesitation. Is often brash and assertive unless in the company of seniors. Experiences difficulty when changing environment, often uses humor as a tool to effect change. Is intellectually flexible, often a bit of a loner unless commercial or sexual opportunities arise. Is considered reliable but slightly devious, very intuitive but lacking in genuine empathy. Is often ruthless in negotiations, more so if the responding other is perceived as an underdog. Is sensitive to cues from others, but may ignore them. Usually median to high income earner. Uses symbolism efficiently. Symbolism and power. Symbols have been used by animals for millions of years, long before the evolution of mankind. Often they are distinguishable by their aposematic coloration which is a powerful warning symbol that they are poisonous or venomous. These include arachnids, such as scorpions and spiders, insects, for example, bees, wasps, and some ants, mollusks, for example, cone snails, vertebrates such as fish, for example, terrorists, often called lionfish, zebrafish, turkey fish, snakes, for example, coral snakes, rattlesnakes, copperheads and cottonmouths. Other users include frogs, salamanders, and some venom-producing mammals such as both species of Selenodon, Selenodon cubanus and S. paradoxus, slolarizes and various species of mole display characteristics which relate to symbology. Displays of such symbols are a powerful warning to potential predators. Their message is don't mess with me. Can symbolism hold power that can kill millions? If there is any doubt about the power of symbolism, ask yourself this question. The German race, an ancient and cultured race with a strongly religious and philosophical heritage embracing Nietzsche, Immanuel Kant, Johann Gottlieb Fichte, a race that enthralled the world with the music of Beethoven, Johann Sebastian Bach, Richard Wagner, was at the forefront of science with illustrious names such as Einstein, Max Planck, Alexander von Humboldt and many, many others. How did it descend into hellish barbarism, their peoples following blindly the beliefs of a paranoiac megalomaniac? One who deftly used the sacred symbol of the blue tfan, blood flag or swastika flag, to motivate millions. How does mankind use symbolism? Mankind's use of symbolism is broad, deep and comprehensive. It can be divided into three main groups, overt, expressed and poetic. Overt symbols are usually displayed in the public arena and are used to guide, notify, indicate, inform and warn. As in the animal kingdom, they often use aposematic coloration, often equipped with flashing lights. Expressed symbolism usually relates to language structure and facial configuration. Most often used in a private setting, but not always. Radio and television use expressed symbolism in many ways. Poetic symbolism is used to evoke thoughts, memories and experiences. Widely used in poetry and writing, both expressed and poetic symbolism lack coloration. Overt Symbolism If we look around us we see power displayed via overt symbols almost everywhere. 
Symbology is the warp and roof of humanity's existence. Modern examples are a policeman's uniform, religious regalia, the dove of peace, traffic lights, the red cross on ambulances, national flags, wearing black at funerals, the swastika, a barber's pole. In business the suited attire of management is an example of the close relationship between symbology and power. It would be hard to imagine the powers of government enforced without the use of emblematic symbols. In the military such symbols, for example, symbols of rank, accurately determine an individual's status within any group. Such symbols also act as reinforcement to others to conform. In example, awards and decorations, often displaying aposematic coloration such as service ribbons and their attached medals, are a popular example of reinforcement as they are inexpensive to produce and are a source of pride for the recipient. To the donor it is an inexpensive exercise in manipulative power. Expressed Symbolism Language is a powerful medium to express one's social group in society. An upper-class accent combined with a certain linguistic structure indicates an expensive education, good breeding and possibly refinement. It is an oral warning to responding others that the speaker has power, as it conveys meaning to those from other classes of society, in Birmingham, Glasgow, and Liverpool, for example, who may have an alternate accent. Expressed symbolism can also act negatively to the user's desires. Jacob Brees Mogg, a member of parliament who studied at Eton College and Oxford, recalls when he first stood unsuccessfully for election in Fife, Scotland, I gradually realized that whatever I happened to be speaking about, the number of voters in my favor dropped as soon as I opened my mouth. When language signals are used, a primary means of conveying information, are combined with a verbal message, the effect can be powerful source of manipulation. Poetic Symbolism Great imaginative writers use poetic symbolism to move, infuse, motivate and unite the masses. One only has to look at Winston Churchill's speeches to realize the enormous power poetic symbolism creates, for example, the odious apparatus of Nazi rule, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat, etc. It is not only the province of the politician, but others such as journalists, essayists, authors and novelists, historians, biographers and speakers, as well as people in management, who use poetic symbolism to move masses, and by doing so, engendering power. Other such symbols in this category may be a river signifying the passage of life, the symbol for infinity, mathematical symbols, the peace symbol, the smiley on a computer, the heart symbol, etc. Information Activity Flowchart with Symbolism Differences between MAAIP and other theories As can be seen, MAAIP envisages Homo sapiens as a biological entity, processing information which it converts into power, in order to survive thrive and obtain perceived needs. Unlike past theories, such as psychoanalytical theories there is no need to postulate personality components such as id, ego and superego. Also, humanistic theory, promoting the idea of free will may lack some relevance in today's environment where much of life is structured from birth to death. Similarly, I think straight theory, which is based upon the responses of hospitalized servicemen lacks relevance here, because the environmental settings of his target group, hospitals, military, restricted individuals from acquiring and using power. Today's human environment encourages freedom of expression within the structures of society. Of course, MAAIP is dependent upon environment to determine what type of power structure will emerge as the dominant personality force as both failure and success can be unlearned and internalized during the formative years, it is suggested that manipulative and somatic related power traits are probably developed in childhood, as the architecture of the character develops. Homo sapiens characterized as information processors modernizes the theory of personality to better fit with today's IT age. The relationship between symbolism and MAAIP Manipulative power and symbolism have a symbiotic relationship. The more symbols that are used, the greater the power that accrues to the user. 
A business conference where all the participants are wearing a suit exudes power, as does a nurse's uniform or that of a policeman. When the symbolic image is reproduced the effect of power is magnified. Such symbols often indicate hidden knowledge, in the sense that the observer lacks immediate access to it. Hidden knowledge often indicates latent power. In example, the symbol of a doctor's white coat indicates to the observer that the wearer of the coat has the power of life and death over people, via his knowledge of drugs. Similarly, a policeman's uniform indicates the wearer has the power to restrict personal freedom. A Toyota symbol indicates a worldwide conglomerate with tremendous power in the industrial world, based upon knowledge of technological expertise. Can MAAIP be used with mental health disorders? If we accept that MAAIP explains a theory of personality, then what is its usefulness in society? Can it assist in the cure of mental health disorders? In neuroses, where anxiety has a common base, can knowledge of MAAIP be used as an anxiolytic? Is it possible that anxiety arises from coping failure, because the patient lacks the power to resolve belief systems? In effect, do they feel powerless because they lack the behavioral responses to deal with situational challenges, maybe because they are being manipulated? Research needs to be completed before a definitive answer can be reached, but simple MAAIP counseling, to better manage information output and thus increase an individual's symbological behavioral repertoire, may ease a reliance on anxiolytic drugs. Equally important may be knowledge of manipulative techniques. Also, empowering an individual with MAAIP coping strategies gives long-term insight and learning experiences, none of which pharmaceutical intervention can offer. Does MAAIP have a role in anger management? MAAIP may have a therapeutic role in managing the intensity and effort of anger via improved communication skills and insight into the condition of anger from a MAAIP perspective. Whilst possession of this knowledge is considered important, equally important is knowledge of the psychological tools used to better manage the patient's environment, coupled with techniques to manipulate, intellectualize and rationalize perceived environmental insults to an acceptable level. Research needs to be done in this area, but unlike pharmaceutical strategies for resolving the issue of anger management, the effects of treatment promise to be long-lasting. Are advertising and depression linked? Today's world is where people are exposed to a fairly continuous barrage of, mainly useless, information, often of an advertising nature. Such information reaches the senses from online adverts delivered visually by television, cell phone or PC, such as social media marketing, chat rooms, etc. Also, printed media such as newspapers, posters, banners, food wrappings, brands, logo signage, etc., play a part in delivering this information, as do oral means of communication such as radio, telephone, public announcements and the like. Many sources indicate the average person sees around 5,000 advertisements per day, up from around 500 per day in the 1970s. This is around 100,000 every three weeks. Advertising often creates unattainable expectations. In example, many products feature females that are depicted as slim, beautiful and over-sexualized, with a sparkling personality and confident demeanor. Often they are a role model for female empowerment. For impressionable women who lack these attributes it's easy to see how continuous exposure to such stereotypes can result in lower self-esteem, negativity and depressive symptoms. They may feel they lie outside the norm, and can never be part of the mainstream culture they see promoted via the media 24-7. Depression Management and MAAIP's Role In the face of such a sustained effort to attract an individual's attention across all forms of media it may be of little surprise that some find it difficult to distinguish between the real world and that of the advertising world. Such differences are often discrete. If one's idea of self-worth is corrupted by advertising, it's easy to both lose personal focus and rank order priorities, leading to difficulties determining a goal and overcoming life's challenges to get there. MAAIP may be a positive force in the rationalization and intellectualization involved in resolving issues of self-worth and depression, whether as a standalone treatment or in conjunction with other forms of dialectically based behavior therapy. Further information as with any theory of personality, MAAIP needs refinement. Suggestions and criticisms are all welcome, please use the comments section below.